So I've talked about Rome research in a couple of my videos at this point, and I've had a few comments here and on Twitter asking for more specifics on how to get the most out of it. So that's what this video is all about. For those who don't know, Rome is a new note-taking tool that's reimagining the way that we capture information, and it takes many of its cues from the pre-internet era. Doing away with the traditional file and folder structure that most note-taking tools have stuck with since the dawn of the PC, Rome at first glance has more in common with Wikipedia than it does a traditional note-taking app. And this is because of the way that Rome employs bi-directional links, which allow you to create new pages on the fly and move from thought to thought with ease. This linking structure is derived from the concept of hypertext, which dates back to the 1960s and inspired the World Wide Web that we use every day. But where the internet uses links to interconnect websites, Rome uses links to connect your thoughts. And there's a particular power in collecting your ideas this way. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a video for people who want a quick introductory guide to getting the most out of Rome. First, let me tell you about what you'll see when you get started. In Rome, each page automatically takes the form of a bulleted list, with each line creating a new block. Right off the bat, this might seem a little odd. After all, most note-taking tools since the era of Microsoft Word have made a document-style, paragraph-based view the main mode. But defaulting to bullet points makes sense as soon as you realize that Rome prioritizes the connecting of thoughts and ideas from page to page. Because Rome caters to note-taking, documentation, and references, lists are an extremely useful way to think. But if you're trying to write an essay and you don't want to deal with the unsightly dots, just right-clicking on a title lets you choose a document mode, which removes the bullets for that specific page. Rome supports Markdown, letting you not only emphasize your text, but highlight it, add code blocks, include images, and more. There's a helpful shortcut guide in the bottom right corner of every page, which lets you know all of the commands available to you while writing. And since Rome is still in beta, new ones are arriving with regularity. Hitting the slash brings up a series of triggers with a ton of different functions. There's a date picker to tie a block to a date, a to-do checkbox, which we'll talk about later, a Pomodoro timer, tables, Kanban boards, and much, much more. You aren't expected to use all of these different features, but they're there for you if you want them. Which brings us to the first feature that you really should get acquainted with, bidirectional links. Here's a quick explanation. In Rome, you can create a new page within a page at any point by just wrapping a word or words in a set of double brackets. So let's say you're taking notes on a book about Leonardo da Vinci and the author references Michelangelo. Wrapping the name Michelangelo in brackets means that now there is a new page created as you typed for that renowned 15th century painter. And instead of this page being entirely blank, Rome does something special. There are two sections at the bottom of each page called linked references and unlinked references. This space reveals any time in which the page's title has appeared on any other page within your notes. And because it contains both linked and unlinked references, you'll see the instances you've intentionally made as well as any that you might have missed. The text I just entered about Michelangelo appears under linked references. But let's say I copy and paste a bit of the book I'm reading, and it references Michelangelo again. That too will show up, even if I don't add those double brackets. In my opinion, the best way to use Rome is to create new pages all the time without hesitation. Anytime you have an impulse to do so, just do it. The worst case scenario is that you'll have a relatively blank page sitting in an infinitely large graph of notes. And the best case scenario is that you'll write some notes down in this new interconnected way and later come across them again and realize that that past idea and a new idea can be linked. You can make these pages with reckless abandon. And one of the most liberating things about these links is that if you decide to change a page's name later, any reference to it in the past will also change instantly. Because of this, you don't have to worry about choosing the perfect title or later breaking past writings by updating them. Titles simply update alongside your thinking. 
So let's say that you're taking notes on a book and you write down a quote from a source that that book referenced, but you didn't make a page for the author. Then later, you pick up another book by that same author and you start taking notes on it and create a page for that author. Rome will instantly show you the other book under unlinked references and give you a quick option to link it right there. There's a wide variety of reasons that this might be helpful to you, including when you decide to create a page for an idea that you may have written about in the past. What if you decide to write about computers or meditation or speed reading? If you've ever written about those subjects before, Rome will help you connect the thoughts quickly, sometimes before you know you actually want to. And because linking ideas is so core to Rome, it's also incredibly easy to work on ideas side by side. Clicking on a page title makes that page appear in a right-hand sidebar, which is an amazing way to move between thoughts, build on references, and link ideas. And you can open as many pages as you want within this sidebar, then close it when you want to focus back on a primary page. As you write, a menu bar up top has some important stuff. A sync indicator letting you know that you're connected to the server and that your thoughts are saving. A search bar, which you can type into directly by hitting Command U at any time. A filter function to pare down text. A graph depicting pages connected via bidirectional links and a star, which adds the page you're currently on to a shortcuts area in the left sidebar. That collapsible sidebar is important because it gives you quick access to Rome's three main spaces, daily notes, the graph overview, and all pages. The daily note is the main page of Rome research, and at first this might seem a bit strange. This note, automatically pre-titled with today's date, isn't intended to be some temporary space which will be retitled something later, but instead a place for you to not only create thoughts on the fly, but log them historically. My first instinct was to just leave this note blank and create new pages for each thought, but after I started using it, I began to understand how powerful a lightweight journaling function within your notes can really be. I've begun using these daily notes to think out loud, moving from idea to idea, note to note, and task to task, which again, we'll get to soon, without a second thought. Where my other pages are orderly and interconnected with intention, the daily notes are a space of total organized chaos. But that chaotic area has a surprising tendency to reveal ideas hidden deep within my subconscious. I've also found that creating a habit of adding some notes from each day can be really beautiful. I've tried journaling in the past, but I've never really stuck with it because I end up missing a day or forgetting to open the journaling app or just falling off. Because this journal is in Rome, an app that I'm already writing in every day, I'm much more likely to write down some of these moments of everyday life that I want to remember later. I just bought a new home and I wrote down pretty much the entire process within my daily notes, including the experience of seeing the house for the first time and walking through it. That's going to be really special to look back on later, and without Rome, I would have never written it down. Let's move on to the graph overview. The proper nomenclature for your collection of notes within Rome is your Rome graph, and it becomes apparent why that is as soon as you click on this page, a two-dimensional graph of all your notes and the connections between each of them. On this graph, each note is given a visual circle sized according to the page's word count. Clicking on any note highlights it in blue and shows the connection points it has to others. Right-clicking on this page lets you alternate between two different views, a linear layout that's based on time or another layout which places all of the notes on a grid. You can also choose to remove log days and see the grid without each daily note page to more clearly see the links between ideas instead of connecting them through time. It's fascinating to click on each note and see connections light up which you might not have fully realized you were making. And you can see smaller graphs by clicking on that graph icon in the top right corner of any note, which will show you only pages directly connected to the one you're currently looking at. You can click on these to move from graph to graph, allowing you to see the interconnected nature of your thoughts as one idea flows to another. Here's an honest truth. As of right now, this graph isn't particularly helpful, at least in this current phase of Rome's beta. 
The lack of filters means that as your graph grows, it becomes more and more hard to understand. But I believe there is a genuine benefit in the mental empowerment it provides you as a note taker to see your notes not only grow, but be connected. And I know that as Rome continues to be developed, this page is going to get a lot of increased functionality. The last main section of the left sidebar is all pages. And this is yet another way to see all of the notes you've been collecting within Rome. This is perhaps the most familiar view to anyone who's used a note-taking system before, and it could be sorted by last updated, alphabetical order, word count, mentions, or by creation date. Now about those tasks that I mentioned earlier. An impressively powerful feature of Rome Research is the way that it can function as a task manager. While writing, you can press Command Enter or Slash to do to turn that bullet point into a task. These tasks will be automatically added to a new page called To Do, and completed tasks will live on another page called Done. Going to these pages not only shows the tasks you need to complete, but the pages on which they live, making it easy to see what needs to be done and from where the task originates. I have a confession to make. Though I've used almost every task manager under the sun, I'm terrible at task management. I'll totally buy into a new system for a few months writing down each task and filling out tags and due dates and notifications. But at some point that system will become a task graveyard. I just start opening it less and less, tasks get missed, and then of course I give up in frustration. Part of the blame definitely lies with me, but a real issue I've always had is that these tasks within the task manager end up feeling hidden. You have to open that task manager every day over and over and create a daily routine to ensure that nothing gets missed. And that just doesn't work for me. But this is why the task management system of Rome is so powerful. Using Rome as a task manager, I'm allowed to just messily scatter tasks throughout my graph and on any page that I want. If I'm taking notes on a book and it references something else I wanna read, I can add that to do right there. If I'm logging my day in the daily note and I realize that there are things that need to get done, I just add them. These tasks can be given tags and due dates really easily, but I often find that I don't even really need those because a cursory scan of my tasks broken up by page makes the needs pretty clear. I've been using Rome as my sole task manager for three months now, and I feel way more organized than I ever have before. Once you really start writing in Rome, the features that make the most sense to you will start to reveal themselves. Maybe you're the kind of person that, like me, will use the to-do feature to the fullest. Maybe you'll never touch it. Maybe your Rome graph, unlike mine, will be riddled with Kanban boards. There are dozens and dozens of features that work in harmony with the way that your brain does, and they're just waiting for you to find them and for the process to click. I'll share another one of my favorites. Just like Rome's bi-directional links let you connect your thoughts, there's another similar feature called the block reference. Where typing a set of double brackets brings up a list of page titles, typing a set of double parentheses brings up a list of every block that you've ever written within Rome. I didn't use this feature for months, and then once I did, it became the power feature that I tell every Rome user about. Have you ever taken notes on a book or article and thought, this reminds me of something else? Well, instead of just referencing that page's title, Rome's block references allow you to cite the specific idea in line with whatever it is that you're writing. This allows for the remixing of your thoughts on a level that's way more detailed than if you were just referencing different pages, which is great if you want to pull out a specific note from a book's Rome page, reference a particular Bible verse as you take notes on a teaching, or cite a past thought that feels harmonious with something new. One of the joys of using Rome Research is discovering features like this and realizing how it opens up your brain to a new way of connecting ideas. And I'm sure that I have plenty more to learn myself. Rome can initially feel daunting to use, but its bi-directional links and its innovative graph interface mean that your notes collection feels alive and accessible in a way that it may not within a more traditional file-based application. And I find it fascinating that this innovative experience is rooted in the dated principles of hypertext. It feels very fitting that Rome's logo is an astrolabe, a centuries-old navigational tool which the founder says fits perfectly as Rome is for building maps of thought and the value of knowledge.
Rome is a tool centered on building out thoughts as opposed to simply capturing them. And because of that, the experience will be different for everyone. At first glance, Rome can feel a little daunting as there's no tutorials, instructions, or templates. But in actuality, it's remarkably simple to use. So give it a try and start building your graph of knowledge today.